What? This app just took a nearly one hour long recording and cut it down to under 40 minutes in just 11 seconds. What the actual Okay, this app is incredible and it's one that I will use as my editing assistant on every one of my videos from now on. It's called Timebolt and what it does is automatically detect silences between takes and cuts them out. It's also way faster to go through your raw footage and your takes in Timebolt than it is in Final Cut Pro. And the best part is you can then export this cut down into Final Cut Pro using an XML so that you can continue editing. Let's have a look at three different scenarios a single file workflow, a workflow with separate video and audio files, and a multicam workflow, which is a game changer even if you don't edit multicam footage. I'll explain why in a bit, but before I do, make sure you check out the link down below to enter the giveaway because the wonderful people over at Timebolt are going to give away one lifetime license to one of you guys, and there's also a discount code below if you want to purchase it. Let me first show you how Timebolt works using a single file with my talking head clip. With Timebolt open, the first thing you'll do is select the file. In this case, I've got my single file with the video and audio in it. Timebolt does its thing in real time. And it's done. Now this clip was about 29 minutes long and you can see here that the output file is shorter by nine minutes. So Timebolt has already cut this down from 29 minutes to 20 minutes in just a matter of seconds. It's unbelievable. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with all this extra time I now have. Maybe I'll figure that out by the end of this video. If I click my cursor around in these silences, you can see the volume level of that silence. And if I click it in here in the middle of the audio, you can see at what dB level that audio is. So I know in these first few, I'm kind of getting into position. So I'll just deselect those. And it looks like I start speaking around here. So as you can see, all of these silences in the middle have been cut out. There are a few moments where Timebolt has picked up certain sounds as voice and maybe not as silence. This was when a bell was ringing outside, so I can just go ahead and cut that out. Now, you can update your silence detection options to customize these results. I find that the default settings work really well, but you can come in here if you like and you can change these options. Once you've changed your settings, you'll just have to hit update silence detection and it'll overwrite those initial timeline edits. You can see now by doing that, we've only cut out four minutes. So some of these other sounds that it thought was silence, it's now including. I can scroll right down to the bottom and I can either render this edit out, export each of the little clips as individual video clips, or I can export a normal XML for apps like Premiere Pro or DaVinci Resolve. And I have two Final Cut Pro options. We'll get into the multicam option later. For now, I'm just going to export a typical Final Cut Pro XML. I'll click here to show the XML in Finder, and then I'll double click to open that up in Final Cut Pro. I can open up that timeline, and as you can see, I have all of these cuts on my timeline. Let me show you a few more of Timebolt's features as we look at the second way of doing it with a single video file and a separate master audio track. In this scenario, I'm going to grab the clip that I started recording first to make the syncing easier. In this case, it was my audio file. I hit record on my external recorder before my camera. So I'm going to use that audio as my master track here in Timebolt. If I play this back, you can see this is where I started setting up. So I can simply click on those green sections to remove that. And I can hit the up arrow to go to the next green section. Every time I hit the up arrow, I move to the next green section. And if I hit the down arrow, I go back to the previous green section. There are a couple of shortcuts I'm going to go through here to make things easier, but if you forget any of the shortcuts, you can simply come over to the keyboard shortcuts menu over here and run through them yourself. So using the shortcut O, I can turn off a green section and I can use my J, K and L keys like I do in Final Cut to go backwards, to pause or to play back forwards and tapping L more than once will increase the playback speed. So I can basically preview a file like this Welcome to my Final Cut Pro color grading and hit the up arrow where I need to to jump to the next green section. I can hit K to pause here and let's say I want to split this clip. I'll hit L to play back, K to pause again and let's say I want to take this second section out, I can hit O once again. I can also click to navigate to any one of these sections and hit O to turn it back on. 
Let's assume I'm done doing all my cut work in Time Vault. You can see here that this file is shorter by almost 16 minutes, which is a huge time saver. But there are some other features in Time Vault that are really nice. For example, you can fast forward silences. Let's say you have some screen recordings that you've done. You can choose to fast forward the silences between your dialogue when things are happening on screen. Maybe something's rendering or something's processing. You can tell Time Vault to fast forward those sections and you can choose the speed. You could slow it down or you could speed it up by one and a half, two, three or four times speed. You can also choose whether or not you want to mute those fast forwarded sections. Let's say I want to fast forward cuts longer than two seconds. You'll see that that then becomes orange. All the fast forwarded sections in my timeline are now orange. Another thing you can do is to apply transitions to all of the cuts that Time Vault's making. So you've got a couple of options for the type of transition you want. Let's just assume you want to crossfade. You can also choose the duration of those transitions. You can also add background looping music and then set the volume to whatever you like. You'll need to select the looping audio file here and then when you add that file to the render queue, your transitions and music will be applied. Now for this example, I'm going to show you my workflow. I'm going to uncheck the apply transitions box and assuming that this was the time bolt cut that I'd like, I'm going to go down and export an FCPX multicam sequence from time bolt. This is where you'll input your frame rate. I know that I shot at 23.976 and I'm going to export that multicam sequence. I'll go to that XML and I will open it up in Final Cut. When I open up my timeline, you can see I have all of these cuts from Time Vault and my timeline is just short of 39 minutes. And I'll show you in just a second why this is so powerful for my workflow. I'll zoom into the beginning of the timeline here using the shortcut command plus just so you can see the cuts a little bit more clearly. If I right click on one of these multicam clips, I can see that the active audio angle is set to primary angle and the same for video angle. So when I open up that multicam clip, I'll hit Shift Z to see the entire file. All I need to do now is add my footage. So I'll add a new angle, but because I want the video angle to stay on this primary angle, I'm going to label this new angle audio and I'm going to select my master audio, hit Command C to copy, set my monitoring angle to the audio angle and then hit command V to paste. I'll then delete the audio clip from this primary angle and now I need to drop my footage in. I've saved my footage where this audio file is so I can just hit command shift R to reveal that in Finder and then I have my two clips that go with my master audio file. I'll simply bring those into Final Cut and if you chose to make the audio your master track but you realize that you actually started recording on your camera first, you can simply just trim a little bit off the front of your camera angle, select both of these, click on the down arrow over here and choose sync selection to monitoring angle. That will sync these two clips to that master audio. In my case, I obviously started my audio recorder first, so I can just trim this back to the front. Now I'll go back to the main timeline and as you can see, I have all of my cuts in a multicam. I'll hit Shift Z to show my whole timeline. I'll select all of these clips and I'll head over to my audio properties in the inspector window. I'll turn the audio off on the primary angle and on for the audio angle. Now, if I zoom back in here, you can see I have my master audio for all of these cuts. Welcome to my Final Cut Pro color grading masterclass. The huge benefit of this multicam workflow is that if I go in and I make any changes to the grade of these clips, let's say I saturate it and I create a bit of contrast just as a simple example, and I decide that grade's not right, I actually want to boost the midtones, I can just come into the multicam clip and do that as opposed to having to copy and paste attributes to each of these clips and to delete them if I make changes. The same can be done with the audio. If I apply voice isolation, for example, to this clip, that affects the audio in every single one of these cuts, as opposed to me having to go and copy and paste attributes and do that for all of these clips. This method is how I will be editing all of my YouTube videos going forward and a lot of my client work that involves interviews and talking head clips. Now let's have a look at the multicam workflow. Using the same technique in Time Bolt, you can cut down your master file and then hop over to Final Cut Pro to add the additional angles and sync them all up. You simply click on the down arrow over here, choose add new angle, give it a name, and then drop your footage into that angle. So I have a camera A and a camera B angle set up here. You then make sure that your monitoring angle is set to your master audio. 
you select the video clip, you then click on the down arrow over here and select sync selection to monitoring angle. I'll do that for camera B as well. And then once that's done, I can go back to my main timeline. I'll select all of these clips and I'll head over to my audio properties in the inspector window and I'll turn the audio on for the audio angle. And I'll make sure my multicam viewer is open by using the shortcut Command Shift 7. If need be, I can hide the browser window using the shortcut Control Command 1. And then I can simply hop through the timeline, changing the angles by clicking on each of the angles in the multicam viewer or by using the number keys on the keyboard. Number 1 will cut to angle 1 and number 2 will cut to angle 2 and so on. The order is determined by the angle order in your multicam clip and you can change the order by dragging them from the right hand side here to rearrange them. If you want to just cut the video angle and leave the audio angle constant, which is what I do in 99% of my multicams, make sure that the video only switching is selected over here. The free plan lets you try Time Bolt out before you buy it and it has its limitations obviously, but if you're on the fence, I would highly recommend downloading the free version and seeing what Time Bolt can do for your workflow. When it comes to purchasing plugins or tools like this, I always justify it by how much time it's going to save me. At the time of making this video, it's only $17 per month. And if your hourly rate was only $17 per hour, Time Bolt would need to save you a minimum of one hour per month to make it worthwhile. And I guarantee you, it's going to save you a whole lot more than that. Don't forget to check the link out down below to enter the giveaway or use the code BRAD10 to get 10% off. Time Bolt literally saves me hours of tedious editing time every week. And I guess with all this extra time on my hands, I'll finally get to finishing that color grading course.